everyone and welcome to Future Cities Laboratory podcast. I'm your host Pandi and today we bring to you the second edition of our three-part series on global urban responses to COVID-19 pandemic. Previously, we talked about how digital technologies can support smart cities in responding to the ongoing pandemic. While these technologies provide the tools to execute the response, there is an ecosystem of local institutions, skills and services that we need to make these responses effective. And that's what we talk about today. We will discuss how governance arrangements have been crucial in ensuring the effectiveness of COVID-19 responses in smart cities. I'm joined by Dr. Devisari Tunas, Research Coordinator at FCL, and Fabian Klavier, a Senior Urban Planner and Researcher, formerly Project Coordinator of the Big Data Urban Design and Governance Group at FCL. Welcome, Sari. Welcome, Fabian. Thank you, Tanvi, for having us. Hi, Tanvi. Thanks for hosting us. So let me dive right in with my first question about uh, a grant you were awarded in 2018. You studied smart city and urban governance in cities in Indonesia. More recently, you've been involved with providing digital support to these cities in their responses to COVID-19. And even though my question might sound like an oversimplification, I'm very curious. Do you find that those smart cities are generally better equipped and better prepared to handle the ongoing pandemic? Actually, yes, we do find smart cities are generally better equipped and prepared in dealing with the pandemic. And this cannot be explained solely by the presence of the right technology. Uh, when we started the project, we knew technological innovation is uh, only one piece of the puzzle, obviously. It takes the whole village, basically, to make things work. Our research findings suggest that the success of smart city implementation is determined by the government arrangement that are put into place Typically, uh, it includes uh, institutional supports, ad hoc steering committee, uh, knowledge partners, uh, also the technological solutions itself, such as platforms or various apps and ICT supports. And of course, it also includes the relevant policies and regulations that make it possible. And through time, this arrangement in turn become important assets for the cities because they can be mobilized and tweaked to address larger societal issues, such as now in the case of the pandemic that we are seeing. So far, our observation on the pandemic seems to confirm this. We saw many cities are employing those arrangements in managing the pandemic. And even for FCL, we experienced this uh, directly firsthand in Makassar, where we, as their knowledge partners, were engaged to help the city to analyze their COVID-19 data. Yes, I completely agree with Sari. So smart cities have been, in fact, better equipped to respond to the pandemic, thanks to the governance arrangements that were already put in place. And also another important element for smart cities uh, is their capacity to connect to each other and learn from other cities' experience, whether at the national, regional, or international level. So this has proven to be also an important factor in the response to COVID-19, as many cities, regions in ASEAN, were looking at their peers, other cities, to, to develop and adopt new solutions to fight the virus and its consequences. So a concrete example, the province of West Java in Indonesia has developed a solution called PicoBar, which is an app providing transparent information about COVID cases and also debunking fake news. So this solution actually takes its inspirations from other solutions in Vietnam or in Singapore, which are also using apps or social media to inform people during the crisis. So because they are open to new ideas and always on the lookout for innovations, smart cities are actually more responsive and able to deploy solutions quickly. It's so fascinating that both of you instantly agree that smart cities are better equipped and better prepared. But in very different ways, you both say that it's not the technology itself that you can attribute this success to. So if technology is only one piece of the puzzle, as you say, Sari, then what are the other pieces? What are the other critical dimensions behind a successful smart city process? In our research, we link back uh, smart city initiatives with the local policy processes. 
uh, we identified five different dimensions behind a successful smart city approach from a public policy point of view. One being the governance arrangement. The second one is the engagement with the local partners, basically to translate the solutions that have been borrowed or inspired from abroad, because it must be tweaked and mixed with the local solutions to make it more contextual. And in addition, there are also three other dimensions that are very important in a smart city process. The first one is the capacity to seize a policy window of opportunity. So smart cities, they don't happen by magic. They usually take off during specific time windows. Could be elections, could be a crisis, like such now. as the one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just as, such as the one that we are living now. When election actually, and crisis. Election yes. and crisis. <laughs> when actually time is ripe for new policy experiments. The second one is the ability to take inspiration from existing solutions and also to connect to international networks. So smart city ideas and solutions are traveling at high speed. And international city networks, there are many of them, many examples, they provide venues for learning and cooperation. So they are also very important. And finally, the existence of policy entrepreneurs. Policy entrepreneurs could be local leaders, politicians, and smart cities don't take off without their action because they develop a vision and a plan on how to leverage technology and guide smart city development in the long run. So you uh, arrived at these five dimensions after your 2018 study of smart cities in Indonesia. In hindsight, what do you think these cities did at that time to be better prepared for today? And what are the actual practical actions and policies that are reaping benefits today? We think it is the political commitment from the local leadership that makes it possible. Such political commitment can enable the development of the necessary arrangement such as, for example, the sustainability of the smart city implementations. And apart from that, we also have acknowledged the role of the local grassroots stakeholders, such as academia, uh, researchers, uh, NGOs, and other kind of professionals. So when you have such an active ecosystem who can continuously pushes and nudges the leader for change and innovations, and who can form a fruitful alliance with the government, this is a big plus for the city. So strong with, top down and uh, strong grassroots kind of reinforce each other together. Exactly, you have to have both. So only one way or the other, I think really doesn't work. Uh, one case that we are always highlighting, for example, is the case in Bandung with their former uh, mayor, Ritwan Kamil, who is a very visionary leader. And uh, it, it, it's uh, possible because he has a very close alliance with the grassroots intellectuals in Bandung. And this has been very, very fruitful. And another important issue in the context of preparedness is the data and the manpower readiness, as well as the flexible and accommodating regulatory uh, framework and policies. Yes, exactly. Many cities have also built over time a local tech ecosystem that can now be leveraged for the greater good. So this is a very important dimension in the current crisis. So for example, tech giants like Gojek and Grab Indonesia have committed support to the informal economy in Indonesia and informal businesses in offering to digitize their offer, for example, in the F&B sector. Another example is Indonesia Bergerak, which is a platform by Telkom Indonesia to provide accurate information about the location of virus clusters in Indonesia, supported by virus tech startups. So all the points you made, Sari and Fabian, seem so relevant, so clear and crucial actions, a political commitment from top down, grassroots as we talked about, Sari, and the local tech ecosystem in general. Yet only a very few cities are able to effectively implement these actions and policies and very few cities are able to mobilize technology effectively. What do you think have been the hurdles and roadblocks for the other cities that haven't been able to do this? Uh, again here you can see that everything goes back to the question of a good leadership. We could say the problems may relate to local manpower, you know, that is not uh, enough or budget or conflicting regulations or technical infrastructures, etc. But these actually can be solved if you have the right leadership. 
because good leaders they just will make things happen don't we mm -hmm. yeah good leadership is definitely a key component and i think also inefficient collaboration with the central government could be a hurdle lack of clear chains of command between different levels of government could be a big problem so we can clearly see that in indonesia today so indonesia is somehow suffering a bit from the lack of clear chains of command while other countries like vietnam uh, which has a different administrative system has performed better in terms of coordinated responses so this is not to argue in favor of centralization i'm not here to to say this Uh, but rather to say that smart cities should go hand in hand with proper decentralization, where local governments are really empowered and where good coordination with the central authorities is really considered. So this is very important, especially in large countries such as Indonesia. I just want to now end with a broader question where I ask you to imagine this future where technology has become a friend. It's not a foe anymore in the sense that it is easily accessible by all. Uh, there's manpower to use it uh, and access it, and it's comprehensible. It's also seamlessly intertwined in our governance procedures. Is this all we need uh, to make policy making agile enough so that it can respond to sudden disruptions in the future, like this pandemic? And if not, if there's something more we need, what are the other wheels we need to set into motion? That's a good question, Tanvi. So smart cities and digital solutions are likely to remain a big component in every city's toolbox to respond to future shocks. That's a given. But as we mentioned during our discussion, technology is only one part of the puzzle. So actually, Mr. Choi Ching Kwok, um, who is the director of the ISIS Yusuf Ishak Institute in Singapore, recently mentioned three factors that explain how ASEAN countries have fared regarding COVID-19. So it was an article in the, in the Straits Times. So first factor is the prior experience. So exposure to, to shocks, uh, former pandemics, other kind of stresses. Second one is the effective bureaucratic capabilities. So the capacities to design, implement, and execute policies. And the last one uh, was social capital. So the importance of bottom-up communities um, that Sari also mentioned. So I think those three factors could easily be extended to smart cities in ASEAN. So to make sure that smart cities are relevant for societal challenges, we need to test them over time and over multiple shocks to develop their adaptability and flexibility. So that's for the experience. We need to look at how they increase the capacities of decision makers. So that's for the bureaucratic capabilities. And finally, we need to realign them with social equity and community needs. And that's for the increased social capital. I agree with all the points that Fabian already mentioned. I would like to say that the importance of the governance and the flexible institution setting cannot be overstated again and again, like in the case of uh, Indonesia and also in the other countries. I think finally, by the end of the day, uh, we also can say that because we always have this discussion about smart cities, you know, smart city, uh, the heart of the smart city is not, again, about the technology solutions then they all always go back to the people around it and or to whom that we are making smart city works. Now, this was such an informative session, Fabian and Sari. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Tanvi. Thank you, Tanvi. It's been a pleasure.